But apparently this is like a whole body makeover And a little bit too much chai It feels pretty sharp Apparently, um... <laughs> part of the country. In fact, I'll be spending the next 24 hours living with one of the tribes here in Silhet. Right now, I am here with Mike in a CNG, which is basically like a local tuk-tuk. That's what it looks like. And we're on our way to the Manipuri tribe. The Manipuri, also known as the Meite, are an ethnic group with their own language, history and traditions. While most of them live in India, there is a small Manipuri community in Bangladesh too. A local guest house owner invited us to come over for a couple of days and learn about his culture. I'm here with Raju in his yes. homestay in Majargaon. Majargaon. Majargaon village. And these are some of the kids that live here. <laughs> Let's go! Give, give, give. <laughs> and they're amazing musicians. Raju's just about to show me into the village and uh, we're gonna have a little walk around. One of the best things about my life and work as a travel vlogger is visiting places like this. Remote areas with their own distinctive culture and people who are so proud of their heritage. Well, I was about to experience a very different and much more competitive side of the Manipuri culture than expected. The Manipuris have a special, traditional game that they play. They only play it on special, traditional occasions. We're very lucky, this is one of them. That auditorium over there, this is where several teams are currently playing Kang Shanaba, also known as the game of life. raging and I was about to join. One of the games just ended and uh, I've just been invited to play a little round of the game. Um, I don't really know what the rules are still, I can't figure it out, I'm not sure what the strategy is but I'm gonna give it a shot. Okay, so holding it like that, like that. And then with a bit of momentum, like this. Okay, one, two, three. That was terrible. One more time. Then bending on the body. Bending over the entire body. Okay. Hold, hold like that. Oh, like that. Then bend, 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 bend. Like that. No, my God. Oh. oh. Here, here, here. Finally figured out how to hold the kang. Okay. And now I throw it. So I think this is the professional move. <laughs> kick, 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 kick. Oh. <laughs> It didn't go very far. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> take this game really really seriously. This is not just a local tournament. That team over there came all the way from India just to compete in this tiny little village in the middle of Silhet in Bangladesh. I made a couple of friends during the tournament and they whisked me away to their village home for a very different kind of experience. So I just randomly found myself in someone's house in the middle of the village and there was a girl sleeping here when we came in just on this bed. <laughs> Can we come in? And uh, she gets up, and apparently I'm gonna get the Shandong printed, uh, painted on my forehead. It's like the the bindi, but it's a little bit more complex and more beautiful and more ornate. I'm not really sure what's happening and where we are, but <laughs> just go with the flow. <laughs> Manipuri style. Wow, Manipuri. <laughs> ah, so you go into this rather wide and large skirt. Ooh, they wrap it around. <laughs> I feel like I'm being uh, woman handled. So, and the skirt is in super, super right, wide, and you wrap it oh, around your waist. Oh, tight. <laughs> 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 yeah, I had a little bit too much chai. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ah, it doesn't no fit. The ultra wide skirt doesn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing a panic and I'm about to put on a pedo. All right. <laughs> Can you put this on? I think the lady does not approve. Maybe it's because it's too small for me. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> it's like I've got purple, I've got red, I've got blue, I've got yellow and green. I'm a rainbow in this. But apparently this is like a whole body makeover. <laughs> Getting a, a new hairstyle too. <laughs> this hair? Not good. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> But definitely feels like uh, it's taken very, very seriously here. Like it's it's an art. Mm. All right, let's take a look. Oh wow, that's so beautiful. Now I can see why she was trying to make it so precise because the lines here, I mean, just so beautiful and geometric. Thank you so much. They're back at the tournament this time, all dressed up, and uh, these guys uh, seem to be quite proud showing me around. So. I'm quite proud to be here in this dress. Definitely feeling a bit more like part of the crowd right now. It looks like this game is gonna go on for another three hours, so I think uh, we better get out of here. But the real question is, how many people can you fit in a tuk-tuk? Six. CNG! This many. <laughs> Six. Okay, I'm back in my normal clothes now, a little bit more comfortable and practical. And we're here in this tiny little village where we're staying with a local Manipuri family. We're just about to start making dinner. It's pretty amazing. These guys don't cook using gas or electricity or coals or anything like that. This is a proper traditional wood powered oven that's kind of like in the ground. We're cooking right over the open fire. Food tastes better when it's made with love and care and simplicity like this. That's just my theory. This part of the kitchen, we're making something a little bit different. This is Amgong Jenchin. Amgong Jenchin. Amgong Jenchin. <laughs> uh, this is a digestive juice made from one of the herbs that grow just outside the kitchen. And we're gonna finish our dinner with a nice sip of this magic potion. <laughs> and this right here is the result of our cooking session. This is a true feast with like seven or eight different dishes. And this entire table, this entire setup is called a tali, which basically means that there's a whole bunch of different tiny little dishes that you mix and match and you eat a bit of everything in the company of great friends and hosts right here in a tiny little village of the Manipuri tribe in Silet. Let's get started. Spicy. Yeah. <laughs> Here in Bangladesh, you don't really eat with using cutlery, like spoons and forks and knives, that kind of thing. You eat using these. Your fingers, your hands. So what you do is you take a look at this rice. You mash it up a little bit with your fingers. Form it into a little ball, add a little bit of sauce. All right, ready? And then you just pop it in your mouth. 
Simple. Mm. For me, eating with your hands is like the best way to connect with your food. I don't know if it's scientifically proven that it makes food taste better, but I think it does. Amazing. This is super delicious. Everything about this meal is really fresh and really, really local. And to finish off the meal, we've got this refreshing drink that was made out of a herb whose name that we don't know. We only know the name in Soheti. No, in Manipuri, in the Manipuri language. Uh, but not in English and not even in Bengali. So, hopefully this aids in the digestion of this huge feast that we just had. Mmm. Oh, it's a little bit spicy. Really refreshing. Kind of sweet. Perfect, it's like a tiny little dessert. <laughs> After dinner, our host Raju invited over a few local kids to teach us a very important Manipuri skill. Apparently, um, <laughs> we're learning to dance. I am the world's worst dancer because I am the least coordinated person on the planet. But, <laughs> we can do this. <laughs> yes, come join, come join. <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing at me, not with me. <laughs> Hers is like a beautiful bird is flying in between her lovely hands and mine is just like I'm trying to knead a piece of dough. <laughs> The next morning came, and the villagers slowly came back to life again. On my last morning with the Manipuri community, Raju took me to a neighbor's home where a local lady was busy weaving a scarf or a dupatta on a traditional loom. This is pretty painstaking and extremely, extremely detailed work on a machine that's really complex and very traditional. Apparently, girls learn this craft from a very early age, so it's not that you do an apprenticeship, you're simply taught how to work a machine like this from the very beginning. A single dupatta like this that's being made right behind me takes about two days. Two days of hard work. It's been a year since this trip, but I still find myself thinking about the beautiful nature and diverse cultures of Bangladesh. Travel is a wonderful tool for self-development and growth, but only if you open yourself up to new experiences and people whose lives look very different to yours. And I know that if I could return to Silhet, I would go back in a heartbeat.